Thank you very much. Uh, my great honor to, to join this uh, very important conference. So in the next uh, 25 or so minutes that uh, I'm going to cover a new uh, highly active antiretroviral therapy. So here are my outline. Uh, uh, so the first uh, part will cover the current ART options and most recent guidelines. And then we'll uh, cover on the newer regimen and option novel and future drugs in the pipeline and ended by uh, covering remaining challenges that uh, we're still facing. I think all of us uh, are familiar with uh, the current oral ARV treatment option. So we, uh, so far we do have four major ARV classes. So the, the key backbone is in nucleoside liver transcriptase uh, inhibitors. Uh, this is, these are the common uh, ARV that has been uh, utilized uh, clinically. And the second class is integrase inhibitors, protease inhibitor, and NNRTI, non nucleoside analog uh, inhibitors. Based on uh, the clinical trial for for the FDA approval. So the principal uh, so far in the last uh, decade up to now, the backbone will be two nucleoside backbone, either from uh, TAB TDF, uh, Abacavir, and uh, one of these cytidine analog, FTC or 3TC. And the third drug will be one of the integrase inhibitors, or protease inhibitors or NNRTI. Now, there are a, a number of uh, uh, specific characteristics or profile of these uh, three different classes as a third drug in the uh, three drug combination. In terms of tolerability, integrase inhibitor uh, has the best profile compared to the others. In terms of genetic drug resistant barrier, of course, protease inhibitor uh, is one of the best. And, uh, and, and uh, two ARV within the integrase class, in this case, in Doroticovir and Beticovir also have a high genetic resistant barrier, uh, but not in the class of NNRTI. All classes right now, except for protease inhibitor, has more single pure regimen option. In terms of drug-drug interaction, integrase inhibitor accepts uh, elvetecovir uh, boosted with cob cystat uh, or have a low drug-drug interaction concern. In contrast with protease inhibitor, has the highest drug-drug interaction uh, limitation. In the past uh, five years or so, uh, there are a number of ARV have a higher potency, and these lead to a much smaller dose and smaller pill size. So, for instance, you see that TAF and lepivalin, you need only 25 micrograms. Doroticovir and beticovir, you, you need only 50. Uh, milligrams per dose. So that end up with a smaller pill size that you can see from this picture. Uh, we take a via TAF, FTC, so you use two potent drugs in the three drug regimens, or repeatedly TAF, see there's much smaller pill compared to the uh, most of the uh, commonly used uh, previously like a fibrillance, a triple therapy, a DTG, a Bacovia, 3TC, and others, lipivalin, TDF, FTC. And because of the dose evidence and profile, uh, the, all the current guidelines gearing toward uh, integrase inhibitor as a base regimen as 
the preferred first line regimen, either in the US, the IAS USA, uh, EU, EA, the European guideline, and the WHO guideline. So DTG, widely common, uh, and uh, we take careers. In the European guidelines, you uh, include uh, Doriverine, the uh, base regimen in there, and uh, Lautecaria. This is the current uh, ART option in Thailand. The most recent guidelines has uh, recommend DTG, TDF, 3DC as a preferred first line, and uh, DTG, 3DC in individual who didn't have uh, hepatitis B co-infection and has a baseline viral load uh, lower than 500,000 uh, copy, you can be considered DTG 3TC as a preferred uh, regimen as well. We anticipate we're working on the, uh, the national policy to gearing towards uh, next year to have DTG uh, tab FTC single tablet regimen as a, a first line preferred regimen, and that uh, we're working on that. Now, why we still do need more new ART option? Because uh, so far the current preferred regimen is highly effective, as I have mentioned, easy to take once daily, high resistant barrier, and uh, well tolerated and safe. There are the number of uh, rationale, I think the first and the strong rationale among those is we would love to have uh, a regimen that can be taken once a month or even longer. Or we try to minimize the number of ART, ARV in the regimen so to uh, minimize an, an, an anticipated long-term toxicity. and. Uh, they still have a number, although it's getting smaller and smaller, of uh, multi-drug resistant population uh, that we need a uh, new treatment option. And we're looking forward to a less non-drug drug interaction uh, treatment option. Now, let me uh, highlight a number of uh, current and future trends in terms of new antiretroviral therapy. And you can see that uh, there's a trend to getting toward uh, reducing the number of uh, ARV in the regimen from three drugs to two drugs, or what we have uh, commonly called as a dual therapy. This is uh, some example. Um, DTG 3 tc um, and the injectable two drugs, carbotecovir lepivalin, and the other in, in on clinical trial, like linear capillary uh, elastavir, uh, either as an oral or injectable uh, option. The second trend is to have a more longer duration or reduce the dose frequency instead of taking once daily. Uh, this is the very uh, promising option is this to chart six monthly or implantable device can be those uh, jury. And with that uh, objectives, they have a, a, a number of interesting novel uh, options uh, and uh, new classes. So actually so far, there are two new classes has been uh, developed and about to be uh, approved by the FDA. The first is the NRTTI, so Elastavir. Uh, this is the nucleoside liver transcriptase translocation inhibition. And the, the other, the second one is the capsid inhibitor, Lanacaptavir. Now, when we're talking about two drugs versus three drugs, uh, our impression uh, in the, you know, more than two decades ago, that really the impression based on the two nucleoside dual therapy, which is not good enough. You can see that uh, monotherapy of nucleoside, dual therapy nucleoside is not durable. Uh, the virological 
uh, rebound will be seen in few weeks after uh, the treatment. And that's why we have to rely on mainly three drug regimen. Now, uh, it has been strong evidence so far that uh, two drug in the past is not uh, the same as the current two drug regimen we are talking about. Uh, Dorotecovir 3TC, long acting carbotecovir lepivirin, uh, renocarpavir, and elastovir, and elastovir plus dor doruvirin. So the durability and magnitude of viral suppression is really uh, uh, has been evident. Here are the list of uh, dual therapy options. DTG 3TC have been approved by the FDA, the US FDA, a uh, couple of years ago. Uh, Carbotecovir lipivirin, uh, long acting injectable, also have been approved by uh, US FDA early this year. The other few more options Elastovir Doribalin. Uh, under phase three clinical development, lenacaptovir and elastovir, uh, all of, uh, weekly, also in clinical development. Let me highlight a bit, although this is not really considered as a well in use uh, duo, but uh, more data in terms of uh, uh, real world uh, experience data has been concerned, uh, have been. Uh, uh, confirm uh, what the efficacy study for the approval has been shown previously. So you see that all the real-world report with the valid sample size of less than 100 to up to uh, 1,000 consistently shown that the efficacy is higher than 95% uh, or reaching 100% efficacy. And uh, tolerability is really, really, really impressive as well. So uh, this continuation related to AE is less than, in general, is less than 5%. In some study, it's less than 10%. This continuation because of biological failure is less than 2% from the report. Now, what about the newer dual therapy in this case is the long-acting injection monthly of carbotecovir 30 milligrams or the pivolin 25 milligram that has mentioned as has been approved by the US FDA early uh, this year. There's a, a number of practical consideration of prescribing this uh, regimen. The first thing we have to know is that we need a four week lead in daily, all of ART course. So by taking uh, carbotecovir 30 milligrams and the 25 milligram before uh, starting or loading intramuscular injection. And we have to be aware that the half-life, even both have a long half-life. In this case, carbotecovir, the mean half-life is about up to 11 weeks compared to the pivotin, uh, about 28 weeks. So it's about twofold longer of NNRTI lepivirin as compared to integrase inhibitor carbotecovir. So uh, these can have a potential of, uh, for development of resistance if uh, the compliance is not, is not, uh, uh, not adhered well enough. And there is a need to return to all of breaching therapy if the subsequent injection are not administered within seven day window period. If the maintenance dose is delayed at beyond two months, another all of loading dose and the test restart uh, is, uh, is necessary. In terms of ac acceptability and appropriateness, and feasibility assessment in this uh, CARLISO uh, study, uh, both uh, at one month and, and four months 
of uh, implementation. Interesting to see that uh, it's more than 90% of participants uh, report a very or extremely positive about this regimen at uh, month four, uh, a bit higher compared to when they start at month one of 83%. Let I move on to another regimen. So this is uh, another ARV. This is Elastovir. Elastovir is a new nucleoside liver transcriptor translocation in inhibitor. This chemical structure is the uh, adenosine nucleoside analog. Um, instead of uh, the action, the mechanism of action is uh, similar to other nucleoside liver transcriptase by chain terminator, but uh, this compound is also act at the liver transcriptase trans translocation inhibition. So uh, this uh, elastovir in vitro has a good activity against uh, K65R, uh, TDF resistant, uh, M 184Vs, 3TC, FTC resistant, and many other multiple and nucleoside resistant as well. This is the result of the phase 2B, 144 weeks results uh, of the dual uh, therapy in a naive population. Elastovir plus Doravarin. So this is a uh, NNRTI plus the NRTTI. Um, the study design is a bit, uh, uh, you know, complex. So I, I'm going to walk through it a bit slower. So basically, uh, this is a study population. It's 100 and, and, uh, 120 uh, individuals have a value load at least 1,000, no ARV baseline resistance and no active hepatitis C or B co-infection. And randomized on three different doses of elastovir plus another two drugs, uh, norivirine and 3TC. This is the dose of elastovir 0.25 milligram, 0.75 and 2.25 milligram compared to the triple therapy, uh, norivirine uh, based triple based regimen. And at week 20, uh, the will randomize into uh, we will then switch into two drug uh, regimen so take out the 3TC compared to this uh, triple regimen and uh, after week 60 all doses will switch into uh, switch to elastovir 0.75 milligram plus doravidine 100 milligram, uh, milligram OD. Now here the uh, 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 summary of the 144 week biological result. You can see that the viral suppression rate of the triple drug com versus the combined elastovir derivative uh, arm is uh, look a similar a sample size, but keep in mind this is phase 2A if the power is not enough to look at non inferiority study uh, and no uh, clinical uh, significant in terms of confirmed bilemia uh, uh, seen in this study. It means the viral load uh, fairly above 200 copy per mil. So, in summary of this uh, 144 weeks uh, phase 2B study, uh, there's a high rate of biological suppression of uh, the combined elastovir 0.75 milligram plus derivative arm and dual therapy. No uh, participant met criteria of resistant testing and were very well tolerated. And low rate of treatment related discontinuation and, uh, and uh, AE. And so these uh, regimen are now under phase three trial in uh, treatment naive population and also switch uh, population.
Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Merck has announced that again, we have to wait to see the full report of the switch trial illuminate, illuminate uh, switch A and switch B uh, have uh, reached the primary endpoint of non-inferiority uh, trial. This last two years also has been investigated uh, for implants approach. Actually, there are many other ARV has been investigated uh, for implantable uh, development. Recently, uh, uh, this uh, Elastovia implant has been uh, had been presented at CLOI meeting uh, this year. Uh, the aim is for a yearly prep. And here are some of the uh, pharmacokinetic data. So before the, this uh, vertical dashed line is the, during the implantation. And uh, after the dashed line is the, pharmaco the kinetics of elastovir after taking out the implant. So you can see that after the uh, taking out the implant, the kinetics half life of, of uh, implanted uh, elastovir is uh, similar to half life of the oral dose. So these are some of the advantages of long acting implantable ARV. It can be dosed once or twice a year. If there's a side effect of become pregnant, the implant can be easily removed and that will reduce the risk of uh, uh, any side effect or risk concern and can also avoid non adherence issue for sure. Now let me move on to the last uh, new ARV, uh, Lanacapovir is uh, a capsid inhibitor can be given subcutaneously every six months. This is the very interesting uh, study, uh, Capella. Uh, this, the, the daily sound is a week 26. Um, the target the participant is heavily treatment experienced uh, patient. So the patient already have uh, baseline resistance of two or more uh, ARV from three to four main classes. So it means that the active, full active agent is two or less uh, than, uh, than two. So you look, if you look at the baseline resistance profile in this uh, 72 participant, about almost 100% have mucosine uh, resistant, again, uh, similar to NNRTI, 80% protease resistant, about 70% integrase inhibitor uh, drug resistant. So they randomize into the, uh, you know, uh, in this group, randomized two to one in individuals that uh, still have some activity of the failing regimen. So the uh, while a lot still be able to, uh, uh, um, this is the, the group that didn't have uh, optimized backup regimen in, in the failing regimen so far. So they, they studied the functional monotherapy for 14 days uh, by giving all of lanacapovirs, uh, 300 milligram day one and 600 milligram day two or on top of the failing regimen. Uh, as compared with the placebo. Then after 14 days, all we will receive subcutaneous uh, dose of lenacapovir, 100, uh, 927 milligram every six months, plus the optimal, optimal background regimen. And the, this placebo group also received the same thing, but have to add the oral induction for 14 days as compared to the oral lenacapovir uh, with uh, optimized backbone and switch to subcutaneous lenacapovir every six months. Um, the, the most common side effect is the injection site reaction, similar to any other subcutaneous injection. So you're going to see, but most 
I was sent to 20% uh, grade one. So the finding is about uh, up to 60%, but 70% are grade one. And no discontinuation due to the injection side reaction. And these are the very interesting or uh, impressive uh, result of uh, high, heavily experienced uh, population. You can see that if defined by the snapshot, FDA snapshot of uh, 50 copies per mil of HIV RNA, this uh, approach can reach 80% virtual suppression rate. Or, and when we look at, and when they look at the result of zero uh, active agent in the OBR or one active a uh, agents or two active agents, only at least one active agent combined with Lana Capovirus uh, every six months subcutaneously can reach more than 80% uh, response rate. So the conclusion of this uh, study, uh, Lana Capovirus, in combination with uh, OBR, optimum backbone uh, regimens at uh, week 26 is well tolerated and uh, the high rate of vertical suppression, 81%. And the critical increase of CD4 cell count is significant. So it's uh, 81 cells. And all randomized patients now uh, uh, has received a second uh, subcutaneous lena capovir injection. So the, this ARV, the new ARV has been uh, submitted by Gilead to the FDA in June. So pending for, for approval in people with multi-drug resistance. Let me summarize the new drug uh, profile. Um, so we are now have three new ARVs. The first one is integrase inhibitors, carbotecovirus has been, has been approved uh, by the US FDA in January for the treatment and in September for the PrEPs. And this is uh, intramuscularly for weekly. And the, the, the in terms of drug drug interaction is, is no or maybe very low chance. Elastovir is the NRTTI translocation inhibitor under phase one, uh, phase three trial, and uh, for both the naive and, and prep, uh, can be given all of daily, all of monthly for preps, and implant yearly also aiming for preps. And the regimen can be combined, uh, has been tested uh, in combination with Doriverine uh, oral. And uh, also there's no drug interaction concern. Lanacapavir is a capsid inhibitor pending for approval for uh, multi-drug resistant uh, patients. And the, the potential to be not only for multi-drug resistant, but also for knee preparation and for PrEPs. Uh, there's uh, some potential drug-drug interaction concern because uh, lanacapavir, uh, this uh, capsid inhibitor is a substrate of uh, CYP3, CYP3A and uh, PK coprotein and also metabolized by UTG1A1. So what are the remaining uh, challenges? Okay, we have a lot of good uh, uh, new ARV in the pipeline, uh, can be injectable, implantable yearly or injectable uh, every six months. But uh, we're going to face the same issue of access for all is very unlikely. Uh, very fortunate for the current regimen, particularly for the low middle income country that DTG based regimen, particularly in January, is, uh, is uh, affordable and accessible for all, uh, make it feasible. Keep in mind that the so far status that we are facing is we still have uh, 1.5 million new cases per year globally and 300,000 new cases per year in this region, Asia and Pacific. And we still have 160,000 deaths per year in this region and only 60% are 
of our uh, infected individual has been on ART. So how to make uh, this 95, 95, 95 target feasible or achievable as uh, my mentor, Professor Prapan has been mentioned some time ago that we need to think out of the box and do things differently, not as usually. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Gia.